more target, okay? Come on, Mildred. No, I hit it accidentally. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I love y'all. <laughs> Did I not hit all mute all? Okay. Okay. So, so here's the first question. Here's the first question. Here's the first question for you. Are the credit bureaus, are they linked to any federal agencies? Put a one in the chat. If this is your first time only, if you've been to the class, don't answer these. If this is your first time to the credit overview or the credit training or a credit class, don't answer this. This is for new people only. I need all new people to engage. Are the credit bureaus a part of the federal government? Are they federalized? Are they federal agencies? Do they have any kind of government uh, overreach? If you're new, I'm talking to you. Put a one in the chat. If you believe they are, put a 10 in the chat. If you don't believe they are. All right. I need, I need some interaction from the very new people. <laughs> Ladies, help me to see if you see some new people on. I want to make okay, sure. Let me check and see. Okay. I'm looking. Dorothy, let's see who we got on here. Any new people so far? I don't see. Okay. Andy. No worries. No worries. So I'll open it up to everyone. Put a one in the chat. Uh, put If you believe they are uh, have some kind of federal overreach or governance or federal agency, et cetera, put it a 10 in the chat if you know that they are not. Put a 10 in the chat. Okay, I've got a one. Okay, I got one in the chat, and you <clears throat> you believe they are federal uh, agencies or they have a federal overreach. Okay, for some reason, my screen is a little dark. So if you would help me, what is that first name that, that says yes? Let me go over here and see. Huh? The first one is, is Miss Ethel. Miss Ethel? Is yes. that Miss Ethel? Yes, so it's I, me. I, I, I want to make sure you you believe that they um, have some kind of government overreach. They're federal agencies, correct? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. So I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. This is from Google. And guys, you can read, you can go and Google this. And I put the simple question in, are they federal agencies or the credit bureaus federal agencies? Credit bureaus are not government agencies. They are publicly traded companies owned by shareholders. The government does not run these companies, but the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the Federal Trade Commission oversees them to protect us. So they are not federal agencies. That word bureau, <laughs> That word bureau is used uh, very deceivingly on the surface to get the general pop pop population, the general public, to believe that they have, they are federal agencies or they have some kind of federal or governmental overreach. So you can take for granted that whatever they send out, whatever's there on your report or how credit is. Uh, done that you just take them for their word and take them for granted that it's the government. They have to know what they're doing. Who can challenge the government? Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. So they are not. Now, here's the next question. Here's the next question. We're, we're going to talk about philosophy in the game. How many credit bureaus are there? Now, hear exactly what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. How many credit bureaus are there? 
Put that number in the chat. Okay, I see three. I see three. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many credit bureaus are there? She said three. Okay. Said three. Okay. It looks like three is pretty unanimous. Okay, three. Three, three credit bureaus. Okay. All righty. All right, ladies. Do me a favor. Someone Google this while I uncover this. So you won't take my word for it. Put that in the chat. Put that in your Google. How many credit bureaus are there? And there they should be a list. Uh, and you may have to go down a little bit. But it is at least seven. There are at least seven. There's three major bureaus that most people are familiar with. But there are other bureaus. And I want to, instead of them being called on this call, credit bureaus, I want to call them data collection platforms, data collection centers, because that's what they are, data and reporting centers. So one, we know that they are publicly traded. They're owned by the shareholders, just like any company that is a publicly traded company. They have no overreach. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand what the game is and what the game is not. Has anyone found that? Now, there are three major bureaus, but there are at least seven credit agencies. Has anybody ever heard the name Stage Stream? No. Okay. No. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever heard the name Lex Lexus Nexus? Yes. Okay. That is a data center collection agency of, of information that is a credit bureau. Now, over the last 24 months, <clears throat> they have consolidated their resources and falling under each other or owned by parent companies. Uh, but prior to COVID, I know there was at least 12, at least 12, hmm. at least 12, okay? So again, these are data collection centers or data collection agencies. Each area, wherever an American spends money, you usually have a collection agency. As an example, everything related to utilities, okay, that runs your household or that runs a business that relates to utilities and you paying into a system that would give you credit and payment options transactional every month, that information is collected, okay, in, in, uh, in utilities. When it comes to hospitalization or medical, that, are, that medical arena, that data is sliced specifically, that agency may pick up just that information alone. Think about if there's 300 million Americans uh, and one center is collecting everything on every everyone. No, certain data centers collect certain things on uh, key areas of the economy. Wherever there is our payment, monthly payment, quarterly payment situations, then you have a data center that's collecting that information, whether you're paying on time, et cetera, et cetera. And that information is fed to um, those three bureaus. Um, now, this information doesn't come free. It is uh, it's, it's a company and they grow, you know, based upon the success, the profitability of that information. If you've ever heard that before, or excuse me, it's easier to say this. If you never heard that there are more than just three bureaus, put a one in the chat. I've never heard that before. Put a one in the chat. Okay. Shared a file in the meeting. <laughs> okay. You got, okay, you got to help me out. Whatever you share, help me out. <laughs> All right. All right. So this is new information. 
I'm, my goal is to my goal is endeavoring to uh, paint the right picture so you can know the the rules of the game. Think about if you are playing chess, but you are playing with the rules of checkers. There is a hundred percent probability that you're going to lose. Okay, ineffective on the wrong page. Something is wrong. Somebody fixed the system. This guy's cheating, et cetera. The, the, probably the only thing that is similar to checkers and chess is the board. The board is shaped, and the colors on the board, being the board itself, are the same colors, okay, or very similar to that of checkers. Other than that, different rules, different games. Same thing when it comes to credit. You know, if you don't understand the rules, you're going to do something uh, that will not serve you in, in, in the best light. You're going to get emotional. Put a, t put a one in the chat if when you go to Federal Express, there's any emotion attached to that publicly traded corporation sending your package from point A to point B. It could be valuable. And obviously, you want to get it to that destination you know, without being destroyed, obviously you put insurance on it, but you're not emotionally attached to it. Okay. Obviously because maybe it doesn't have the same uh, bearing or effect, but you cannot be emotionally attached to a game and credit is a game. Okay. Credit is a game. Credit is a game. Credit is a game. Probably more in the past than recent, you may have heard of many successful people filing bankruptcy and doing that multiple times and coming back stronger, okay? That means they understood the rules of the game. So let me go back to the five areas again. When we ask you about the five areas and credit specifically, and when a person tells me they're good, because their credit score is good, that's not the only question. Do you understand credit and are you dominating when it comes to the game? If you don't understand the rules, you bumped up against credit, your credit being good because you got a, uh, you, you manage your debt to income ratio, you pay your bills on time. That does not mean you understand credit. And that definitely doesn't mean you know how to dominate. And it definitely doesn't mean you know how to leverage it beyond a house or a car. Put a 10 in the chat. If what I just said, that statement makes some sense to you now. We're going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Put a 10 in the chat. Do you see why we focus on these five areas? And we're going to peel back the onion again a little bit more on why these areas are important for you to understand so that you can dominate in those in those areas. OK, now let me pull this up real quick. You, uh, you put something somewhere. Here. Did you put that? Uh, OK, I'm not sure if you did or not. It should, if you go up on chat, it should say the uh, laws. Okay, 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 good. You, you got to help me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. When I know something, I'm going to tell you I know. When I don't, I'm going to say I'm going to laugh just like I did. Okay. Okay. Oh, there we go. I love it. Can you guys see that? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. I can't see. Only it's only in the chat. I can't it's only see in the chat. Right. Oh. <laughs> Look, I can't help you. Do you see uh, it? Uh, do you see it on your screen? I don't see I do. anything. Okay, I do so see it now, on my screen. Can you share the screen with us, maybe? Uh you know what? That is a good question. <laughs> maybe you share a screen. Lord, don't judge me. Please don't. Uh, let me see. Am I share the screen? Okay, let me. Uh, okay, let me go back. Let me go back.
Ooh. Guys, okay, hold on. Okay, hold on one second. This one, uh, mm. oh. <laughs> guys, you got to have a good self image, and hopefully, you do. <laughs> when you can uh, laugh at yourself. Can you see my screen now? I can't see anything. It's black. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. I got the screen share on. Let me see now. Let me see. Now, let's see here. It said host has disabled participating screen sharing. So you got to go in and disable. Oh, I have mercy, Miss Person. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Let me, let me, let me do this. Let me get back on my phone. Let me get on my phone. Hold on one second. We'll fix this. It's it's a whole lot easier on my phone, or I'm used to it. One. Okay, hold on one second. We got you. Stay with me. Stay with me. Thing in progress. Hey. Okay. Yeah, I could have gone from there. I don't fucking know what I'm at this point. Unmute. Can you see something now? Yes, it's coming up now. Okay, good, 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 good. That was too fun to me. I, I, I didn't know what you were doing. Or... Oh. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You said you put that in the chat. I saw it once. What'd you put it at for, for me personally? Uh, it's uh it's for everyone. Uh... Okay. Can you send it to my phone? Can you text that to me? That image by any chance? Yes, it's coming. It should be to you now. Okay. All right. Good enough. Okay. Can you guys see that? Somewhat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's a little small. I, I, yeah. do, okay. <laughs> I do apologize. I'm working on this technical piece here. Okay. So let's recap real quick for those that just joined us. Your 23 minutes. Um, behind just a little bit so we'll catch you up first of all we asked is are the credit bureaus federal uh, agencies do they have a governmental overreach are they connected to the government in any way and the answer is no the answer is that they are publicly traded companies okay they're publicly traded companies just like federal express ups etc you have to know the rules of the game number two was how many credit bureaus are there and um, everyone on the on the chat, I believe, said that there were three. There are seven, potentially eight. And I know before COVID, there were 12. The, the credit bureaus, as we call them, we are now, for this conversation, we want to call them data collection centers. These are companies 
that collect data and they sell that data. Okay, that is a business. Data is the new goal, okay, from a transactional standpoint. Because when you know exactly the habits uh, of the individual, and there's 7 billion on the planet from what they eat, how often do they eat, at what place do they eat, their buying habits, their payment habits, uh, et cetera, then if you have that information, then every marketer on the planet, governments included, uh, those that want to do you harm or those that don't, they want that information to benefit them to have the upper hand to manipulate, to uh, set things in place for or against you. And that is jahugic in the business world. Would, would uh, put a one in the chat if that makes sense because we're peeling back the onion on the game. If, if you being a business owner had access to every human being's buying habits, their payment history, the frequency, how much they have been trusted over the past 20 or 30 years or a year or a month regarding OPM, other people's money, their, their, their history. When it comes to every time you engage in any kind of electronic medium, text, email, phone call, swipe, social media, paying a bill, whenever something happens electronically, it is being captured by data centers and it is being stored or housed waiting for the right price for that information to be sold and then organized so that the business owner can have a product and people are willing to pay for that product, obviously. Put a one in the chat. I can't see the chat. Put a one in the chat if that makes sense. And we're peeling back the onion on how the game is ran. We're giving you the rules to the game. You got to help me, ma'am. I can't see uh, at all. So we have a lot of ones in the chat. Hello? 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 Is anyone there? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. I think I had Miss yes, Mildred. Yes, I hear. Okay, Miss Mildred. I, uh, I need your. I, I need yes. your, your eyes. Thank you, ma'am. I can't. I can't see anything. I can't so, open my screen to work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear y'all, so that's good enough. Hey, okay. Here <laughs> all right. All right. Somebody, I need someone to look at the screen because if I ask a question, I can't see it. Now, we're going to peel back the onion a little bit more. Put, put your answer in the chat. Who are the customers of the credit bu bureaus or the data centers that we recognize the big three? Experience. Equifax or Experian. Experian. TransUnion. Think, uh -huh. TransUnion. TransUnion. Or Equifax. I think it's Experian. No, no, no. Listen, listen to the question. Who are their customers? Are we, the general population, their customers? Put a yes in the chat or no in the chat. Are we the public, 300 million Americans, are we their customers? Because they're a publicly traded company. Put a yes in the chat or no. Who who has a yes? I do. Chat? All right, tell me why we, we are their customers. I think uh, we we take customers because every time we uh pay our bills and all the type of stuff we get credit. Okay, all right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone that has a no in the chat? Guys, don't be afraid. This is the dialogue. This is the conversation. <clears throat> I'm gonna there's add several. Little... There are several no's. I'm sorry. I thought I, you was hearing me. Yeah. 
There's several no's. Okay. And then we got a, a, I believe a correct answer to say corporation. I don't want to let him slide by without the, with, without getting the correct answer. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm okay. So the young man, whoever put corporation in there, explain. Was that a guess? Uh, I put the corporation as, oh, corporations as being their customers as, uh, because they are basically um, servicing them not on our behalf in a way as far as uh, we're kind of involved as a third party being pulled into it uh, based on the contracts that we are not, you know, um, legally binded in with that uh, data collection agency, if that makes okay. sense. Okay, what's your name, sir? Perret. Perret? Yes, sir. Mr. Frey, you're going down the right rabbit hole. So let's peel back to let's peel let's peel it back by uh, putting a statement out. Okay, when your credit score is low, does the business community benefit more, or when your credit score is high, does the business community benefit? So low or high, does the business community benefit the most? when your credit score is low? Because when your credit score is low, do you pay more or less for the goods and services? Mr. Ferrar, let's stay down that rabbit hole since you responded. When your credit score is low, do you pay more or does it, uh, do, yeah. When your credit score is low, do you pay more or less for the items that you need? Hello? You're you're muted, Teray. Uh you pay more. You pay more. Correct. So if you when so again, let's go back to the customer again. And you're down the right rabbit rabbit hole. The business community benefits more for you having a low credit score. Because you, the the, the consumer, the, the general population, uh uh pad their pocket, the lower your, 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 your credit score is. So here's, here's the rules of the game. If the fox is running the hen house, is he going to do everything in his favor to make sure that those chickens are fat, juicy, and ready? <laughs> I mean, succulent. He's guarding the hen house. You don't want the fox guarding the hen house. So if you are expecting the credit bureaus, those public entities to educate you on how to raise your credit score or make it easy for you to raise your credit score, you're, you're asking the Fox to give you information so you can escape from the hen house. Is the Fox going to do that? <laughs> You can respond uh, off mute on that one. Yeah, no, nah, the fox ain't going to aid in, you know, uh, something that's going to help the hen escape, you know, his plot. No, no. He wants you fat and juicy with a low credit score. And it's, it's to his benefit to sow misinformation, disinformation, or confusion. It's, it's, in, it's in the benefit of the fox to make sure that you only know of three bureaus. And instead of calling them uh, data centers, let's use the word bureau so we can throw them off because they that will imply psychologically that this is government and you got to follow the government. And whatever they say on your report goes. And there will be no reason why the government would put something on my report and me to challenge that. I mean, that would be sacrilegious. There's no way who can challenge the government. And they're not even government entities at all. Put it a 10 in the chat if you're starting to understand the rules to the game. <laughs> all right, let's go down that rabbit hole just a little bit more. So again, the credit bureaus, the Fox, 
does not want your credit score to increase because it doesn't benefit their, again, their, the customer of the bureaus is the business community because they pad their pocket when your credit score is low. So here's the next question I want to ask you. Are the bureaus, the credit agencies, remember 300 million people, do you think that there are Is, are the human beings making data entries into 300 million people's credit profile? Is that a human being doing that? Put a one in the chat if you believe that every every um, data entry into your profile is done by a human being. If you if you believe that a computer is doing the majority of the work, <clears throat> then put a 10 in the chat. Are we do we have ones or do we have tens? We have tens. So okay. So if a computer is doing is doing the data entry for the most part, there are situations that Mr. Calhoun has went over when you're doing a, a letter that you want to use different color ink. Uh, you want to make sure that things are different. Mm -hmm. The letters are not all capped, right? You want that to be pulled so that a human being will have to actually look at that. That's another subject for another day. But since there is, it, it, since it's happening and it's a computer doing it, then all we have to do is know what the computer is looking for. Once we understand what the computer is looking for, you know, how the algorithm works, how often, et cetera, et cetera, because that computer doesn't know uh, whether you are white, black, young, old, fat, skinny, you know, whether you came out of Yale or jail for the most part. It's not looking for that. Although, depending on what application or, or, or situation where that data is coming from, it may be there. They're looking for certain things. Specifically, we're going to focus on those specific things. And those specific things that that computer is looking for, the first thing that we, you, you want to do, because we're going to cover debit versus credit on purpose, one of the first things you want to do concerning raising your credit score is you want to, well, first, you, you have to have a credit card. Let's go over these areas real quick. Let's go over these areas. Credit is in uh, five areas. 35% of your credit score is payment history. Payment history. 30% of your score is utilization. It depends on where you get this definition from. Some will vary it, but all you have to do is think through the process. Credit, credit card. Now, does that impact, you know, the frequency yeah. of your bank? Does that impact the frequency of how you pay your car or your home? Yes. But the frequency of things showing up in a greater way that they look at is your credit card utilization. Because you can't do much with the utilization concerning your mortgage or your car. OK, you're not paying that off in 12 months or every month, zeroing it out or having a certain balance. You have, uh, you know, 30 year mortgage you're up to seven or seven years or 10 years, depending on how you got your car finance. So your utilization could not that utilization could not be talking about those major items. So we're going to base that on credit card utilization. 15 percent of your score is based upon the age of your credit. 10% of your score is based upon the credit mix. Another 10% of your score is based upon new credit. We're going to focus our attention on 65%. Not that the remainder areas are not important. They are important, but these are more important. The weight of your credit score, how fast it goes up or down or remains the same, 
is uh, 35% payment history, 30% of your score is credit card utilization. Okay, so what does that tell you? You have to have a credit card. You have to have a credit card. Mr. Calhoun, probably on next week, we'll go in more detail on that. We recommend that if you can get uh, access a unsecured card, that's the best way to start. Our, our suggestion, we're not your financial planner, is that you don't have any more than two cards. And I'll go over that in just a minute. But it's to get an unsecured card. If your credit score, your situation is that, that you cannot uh, obtain an unsecured card, then you go with a secure card. Go with a secure card and you want to put, you know, over the course of you know, impacting people since 2012, 20 states, 19, uh, t- uh, 19 states in uh, some foreign countries for 20 years, basically, you know, we found that you want to put at least $500 on that card or well, you want that card to, to match a bill. And we'll explain what that looks like later. So get a secure card. Don't kick the, kick the can down the road. Make that happen for you. If you're going to dominate, master, and understand raising of your credit score. Okay? So um, payment history, credit card utilization. Now, let, before I d- dive into that, because we've got a little time, I want to cover this uh, as well. I want to cover utilization as well. Now, most of you guys have probably heard you want to keep your credit card utilization under what percentage? Now, this is before building more wealth. If you've been on the call, don't put that in the chat. I want the new people that's never been on one of the sessions, uh, one of the training sessions to answer that. What uh, utilization percentage do you want your cards to be at? And that's told universally to maximize, you know, the growth of your credit, the raising of your credit, et cetera. There's a certain number percentage that they want your credit card to be at. Can any put that in the chat? And then once there's some numbers that go in the chat, let me know what they are. I have one said 30%. Okay. One said 35. Okay. Okay. Let me know if something else shows up, but I'm going to address those. That is the universal answer. If you are writing something down, please write this down. This is what we found impacting 20,000 people, 19 states, and a few countries since 2012. This is how points are added to your credit score or how it is, 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 is done by this computer because the computer is looking for your statement closing date. That is different from your due date. Write that down. We'll go back to that. If we don't cover that today, it definitely will be covered in the next area. Okay? So let's start at zero utilization up to 10%. And the date again that that computer is looking at is your statement closing date we like to term that as your financial selfie date you know how you take selfies right you want to look good your photo ready stage camera action that's exactly how you want to look to that computer on that date i'm not saying that The rest of the month is not important. It is. But this date is critical that you look good and you look good based upon your utilization. So let's start at zero. From zero to 10, what we found per credit card, so we're going to talk about two credit cards max because that's what we've gauged the, the, the data on, okay? From zero to 10, On that statement closing date, if your utilization is below 10%, then you will get an average per month of 20 points added to your credit score. Let me say that slow. If your utilization is under 10% and you do the financial selfie on the statement closing date, 
her credit card up to a certain limit that I'll cover is going to be 20 points on average. The average means it could be 15 and it could be 25. But the average that we've seen of 20,000 people that's engaged, that's what we found. So do you see why we say you want to have it at 10% or less? Under 10%. Now, if your credit utilization is below 20%, what we found is that you will get 10 points per card looking at two cards max per month. If you're 20% and under, or under 20%, we found that to be the case. That means it could go as low as five to seven, but it could go as high as 12 to 15. But the average that we've seen is 10 points. If your utilization is under 30%, we have seen that five points is added to your, your credit every month. That means that you could break even and not get any points, and it could go up to 10, but we found that five to be the average. As you go beyond 30%, we found that your credit score, although you pay your bills on time, would slow down, stop, and the higher you go, paying your bills on time, even between the due date and statement closing date, you do it earlier. You're 35, 45, 50%, 60, 70%, 80%, but you're paying your bills on time. Your credit score can plateau, and the higher that utilization is, it will go backwards and you will lose points. Have you ever had the conversation, heard somebody state or know someone that says, I don't know, what's wrong with my credit? I pay my bills on time. Put a one in the chat if you said that, heard that, or you can relate to what I'm saying. I can't see it, so please help me out. One, one, <laughs> one. If, if that's you, if you said it to yourself, come off mute and let's have a conversation. Have you ever said that to yourself, anyone on this call? Yes, I have. <laughs> okay. So again, yeah, we you got to understand that we playing chess or checkers. It's not emotion to the computer. It has no emotion attached to it. So understanding this statement is powerful. Now, uh one card, two cards, we found that to be the max before you don't get those points that I just described. And those points will only be uh, increased like that until you are about 700, 720-ish. After that, there's some other strategies you must put in place. But first, you got to understand the value of utilization financial selfie on that date it is critical that's why we talk about debit versus credit okay so what was i going to say what was i going to say okay let's go let's go with utilization real quick um with, uh, let's say, secure card or unsecured card, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> the average mortgage or rent, or, or let, nah, let's say, yeah. <laughs> let's, say, let's say car note and insurance. Give me the average car note and insurance combined, something that you pay every month. Give me the average. Total maybe eight hundred dollars, maybe seven hundred dollars. Are we close? Help me out. Car and insurance. Uh, you got eight hundred dollars. Okay. In the chat. Okay. 
Yeah. And also, Earl, I had a question. Someone text and say, could you explain again the secure card and unsecured card? They want to know what was the difference. Well, the the unsecured, they both act the same. Now, this is not a prepaid card. Let me separate. This is a unsecured or secured. A secured card is where you put your money on the card and it acts just like a credit card. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you want to go with unsecured first because they're going to trust you with XYZ dollars or whatever you qualify for. Okay. Your first so basically thing is to want to do is a unsecured first. Okay. Now, if you qualify for that, get that. And the place I would go first, again, as Mr. Hal Calhoun says, is going to be Discover. And he'll walk you through probably the next week of how to apply for that, <clears throat> what income you probably need to use um, to get that unsecured card. And then there's a default if you can't get an unsecured, uh, if you can't get an unsecured. Uh, Capital One is good, but you want to deal with the cards that's going to increase in value in the future because that's what we're looking for the future. We're not focused on the starting. Does that answer so far? The unsecured versus secure? They say yes. Okay. So after you use that, that secure card for maybe 90 days, six months, maybe a year, it, it depends on the card. They will actually give you that back. Uh, some of those companies will give that back to you. And then they will actually give you an unsecured card, but we'll show you how to work that. Okay. So let's use $800 as an example of debit versus credit. We use 800 because it takes care of a bill. You've already made a decision that you're going to pay uh, this bill every month. You're going to pay this bill every month. So nothing is going to change. Now, here's some homework that you've got to do. But just I'm giving you general information. I'm, I don't know what day that you actually pay your creditor, the insurance and your car note. I'm going to I'm going to assume let's assume that your that your statement closing date is the 18th of the month. OK, and you get paid on the 15th. OK, your statement closing date. It's on the 18th and you get paid on the 15th. Uh, let's do that a little, let's do that a little bit better. Okay. Let's say the 17th is your statement closing date. And the 19th is where you actually pay your insurance and your car note. I'm just trying to make this easy and make it flow so you'll understand. So secure card or unsecured card. On the 15th, we're going to we're going to put eight hundred dollars on your secured card, okay? Or if it's already there, great. But if that eight hundred dollars is on, is, is that eight hundred dollars is a maxed out unsecured card, it works the same. You're going to take eight hundred dollars from your paycheck and you're going to put it on your unsecured card that is maxed out at $800. Or in this example, let's say it's $1,000, okay? Just, just follow me here. You will put 800 on that $1,000 card. Now, person may say mentally, why would I do that? It belongs, it, then I'll be giving my money away. No, that money on that, on that card still belongs to you whether it's secured or unsecured, because you own it. Trust me, you're accountable for it. It's your money. Trust me, it is. At the end of the day, it is your money. So on the 15th, you use that $800, or you're going to add it to your maxed out $1,000 card, $800. On the 17th is your financial selfie date. So that means you're not going to spend that $800 or use that credit card, secured or unsecured, you're going to let that financial selfie date, which is the 17th, you're going to let that snapshot take, take, take its place. So in that case, you're going to be under 10%, okay? You're going to be under 10% on your secure card, but you're really under 20% from your unsecured card because 10% will be $100 
And in this case, we got $800 on the card. So that's your 20%. Okay. Now, does that make sense so far? Am I explaining that? Does that make sense? I need your voice on this. Yes, no, maybe, if, ands, but. Hello? Come off mute for me. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. The 15th is your payday. Leave that money on the card. The 17th is the financial selfie date. I like to give myself at least two days before I pay bills. Because remember that $800 goes to a bill that I was going to pay anyway with a debit card, automatic draft, or a check, or cash. I was already going to pay that. So I'm not doing anything different other than the mechanism or the methodology of how that vendor receives that money. He's not going to get it in cash. He's not going to get it from my debit card. He's not going to get it by check. He's not going to get it by automatic draft. I changed the mechanism, the card of how I'm going to pay the creditor that I've already been paying all this time. On the 19th, I'm going to use my debit, I mean, excuse me, my secured or unsecured card, and I'm going to pay that bill. Because on the 17th, the computer says, brother, you look good on paper. You are 20% on your utilization. If your credit score is under 700 to 720, we're going to award you 10%, 10 points average per card for that month. So if that's one card, that's 10 points per card. If it's two cards that I'm using, then that's 20 points, 10, 10, time, 10 plus 10. Remember, 10 is the average. It could be 15 and it could be seven. We're saying the average. So if you count up 10 points per card per month, you can see very easily how you can go from where you're at to 100 points in a short period of time. That's what we say we know that following our strategy and having conversation and you engaging, you can add 100 points to your credit score in 90 days, six months. When a person is saying that they are working on their credit and they understand this, a year, two years, three years down the road, I'm like, what are you working on? You have to master these two areas. Now, if you're sending letters, et cetera, that's mm -hmm. phenomenal. That's great. But I guarantee you the 60% of what the computer's looking for are these two areas. They're not emotional. They're not even human. 35% check. 30% check. You Financial safety date is a 17. Check. Whether you are 1% utilization or 99% utilization, you are awarded based upon your utilization on that date. Master these two, these things, and you will master a one part of credit in terms of increasing your credit score. Now, the homework that you have to do is you've got to first find out from your credit card company after you get that secure card or your unsecured card, regardless of it's maxed out, you're going to find out that statement closing date. After the financial selfie date, you pay your bills as you normally would. I give myself two days. Now, if you're, if you're paying your vendors or your creditors don't fall two days afterwards, then make a phone call. The creditor, all they want to do is receive their payment. You tell them, sir, ma'am, things have changed financially. I need to pay you on this date. And don't talk to the gatekeeper. Talk to someone in charge. At the end of the day, that's what they want to do. And you want to pick a deal that you can pay with your credit card. The only way you're going to know that is you have to engage them. Not the gatekeeper, talk to someone in charge. I need to pay you or with my credit card instead of my automatic draft, instead of my debit card, and or instead of cash or check. Because if you if you use your debit card, it does nothing for your credit score. Using your credit card from a utilization is showing those the power to be or the banking or the financial institution that you can be trusted to utilize this and manage this on time payment and credit card utilization. Now, we've got two minutes before we actually go into the 8 o'clock session. Give me some feedback. Give me some questions. Give me some dialogue. Stop. 